And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some championless landmarks. This was a, a challenge here of build a deck with no champions and only landmarks. And if you know, all right, so that's that's where we started with. If you head on over to the landmark cards, none of them are in, like there's not two landmarks in one region, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six landmark cards, but they're all in different regions. So we're only going to be able to play a combination of two landmarks depending on what regions we would go to. And decided to go with Vaults of Helia and Howling Abyss um, and go that route. So this is what we got. So we got a Championless deck with these two. And specifically, Vaults of Helia is probably the one that we're more built around. So, you know, a round start, kill the most expensive ally to summon an ally that costs one more. So we have a whole bunch of value creatures to be able to go with that, I guess, units in this game. We got a whole bunch of value units uh, in, in order to go with that and things that have summon abilities because we're going to be summoning them and not playing them from hand. So with our summon abilities, we can have things like, um, you know, like if we start with our, our twos, Avros and Sentry and Curse Keeper are both, of course, very good to, to kill. Um, but then we have like Avros and Trapper when it's summoned, you get the 1-1 one, one Enraged Yeti in your deck. So like maybe we have like an Avros and Trapper and then the vaults kill that and put in Babbling Bjerg, which will draw a unit with 5 plus power. Maybe we just draw that <laughs> Enraged Yeti, maybe. But then we uh, kill the Babbling Bjerg, put in Avaros and Hearthguard. Again, it's a summon. Give all of our units in our deck plus 1, plus 1. And then uh, we kill that, put in Alpha Wildclaw. There wasn't a great value target at 6 mana, but Alpha Wildclaw is just going to be huge. It'll be not only just a 7-6 Overwhelm, but probably bigger because we played the Hearth card, right? So it's just going to be real big Overwhelm. And then we'll destroy Heart, uh, Alpha Wildclaw and put in They Who Endure. That's going to be our top end card to be able to go find with Vaults of Helia, uh, get up the curve, and of course we'd have a lot of things die by that point and have a big They Who Endure. <clears throat> um... So then uh, besides that, we also have the Howling Abyss. That's our other landmark we have in here that we can create some land, uh, some random level two champions. So we don't have any champions in our deck, but we can create them with the Howling Abyss and they could be pretty awesome. So that's what we got. Chronicler of Ruin just works great in here with all sorts of stuff with Curse Keeper and then with all those summon cards that I was talking about. Um, yeah, so that's our deck. All right, let's go play five games. We'll just play them over in normal. You know, it's meme tier Monday. So let's have some fun. All right, we got no champions over here. They got Vladimir and Soraka. Gonna mulligan Alpha Wild Claw, and I'll keep the rest. Like, Blighted Caretaker is a great thing to vault a Helio away, right? Because, like, you don't really want this 2-1 body, so you can go turn that into, you know, like a Babbling Bjerg. That's a nice upgrade. All right, cool, Togrek. You got a donation deck for Yeti Factory. These old awesome. eyes still see far. I'll write that down. I'm going to pass turn. I found my family, my bloodkin. Crimson Curator. Well, we don't. <clears throat> yeah, we, we don't want to Blight a Caretaker and challenge the Crimson Curator. Come, Clara, we have much to teach you. I can't wait. Alright, so both of our Alpha Wild Claws are in the deck. Um that's gonna hurt our vaults or are in our hand. So that's gonna hurt our vaults of Helia. Um most likely Most likely we got Pale Cascade, which would make my block with Babbling Bjerg not so good. Just going to take it for now. So I guess I'm not... So we could play Vaults of Helia right now and turn the Babbling Bjerg into an Avaros and Hearthguard. But I think I'm just going to play Avaros and Hearthguard instead. The war mother will unite us all. And just get just get more bodies. I love a man with style. Heard it all before. 
They're definitely going to be healing their things. Like, Unspeakable Horror isn't going to actually kill anything. But we might as well play it. No, I'll pass. I would put it on the... I'd try it on the 2-1. I wouldn't try it on the 5-1. The Finally, someone with class. A pleasure to see you too, my dear. It's nothing personal. Stand and defend! This is our homeland! Stand and defend! They're coming! Hi! Okay. So they're going to be playing spells here, and so then after they play spells, then I can kind of decide where we want to go with this unspeakable horror. I'm expecting Pale Cascade. I wanted to try to play around Pale Cascade here, which is why the Hearth Guard's blocking here and not Crimson Curator. Transfusion also makes a lot of sense. Well, that was pretty greedy. Alright, so that was perfect. So waiting with the unspeakable horror really paid off. Two? <laughs> Two things. That's not very many. Will no one listen? Kneel before me. Vladimir. Hello, my darling. There you are. I'll challenge both of the one health things. Could see challenging here. Instead, we yeah, have a challenge there instead. Okay. That's a Nocturne Fervor that's not going to be killing me. Yeah, did, didn't really have time for, for Vaults this game. <clears throat> playing against another deck that's it's that's playing to the board a whole lot. Ready the torches. And so we had to, early on, keep playing to the board. We didn't have time to take a turn off our vaults because of uh, them being aggressive. I do kind of want to play this Howling Abyss, but let's see. If I play the Howling Abyss, we have four, eight, nine. Yeah, we have nine cards in hand, so then our next card that we draw will get burned. Which maybe we don't want the next card that we draw to get burned. means we need to double spell. Calm mind and open heart greet the night. Sure, waste my time. Manners make it, my boy. Yeah, this could have been a good spot to just to play the ball. Right there instead of the Lunari Priestess. These stories were true. Oh, you're all so cute. All right, we'll play Vault here. After attacking. Sure, waste my time. Man is making my boy. Attack. All right, bye, pup. I don't know, like we have three three mana things. I would assume it would kill the Lunari Priestess and go put in Babbling Bjerg. Or Chronicler of Ruin, hopefully Babbling Bjerg. Oh, it kills the 5-5? Five five. Ancient things trapped in the ice. Alright, so the Hearth Guard is my last five mana card. So yeah, I guess the vaults is. Isn't really going to do anything else. So I guess it just kills the thing on the left. I guess it just goes left to right. Maybe it's random. 
Because it's not the strongest, because I've done it before and it didn't kill the strongest. It killed the weaker of the two whenever I had two things before. But, yeah, I can definitely see it just going left to right. Alright, so we'll pump up our things in our deck a third time. And then maybe a fourth with Chronicler of Ruin. Take heart. This is our homeland! But they're saplings! Bar the doors! They're coming! I... Well, we're gonna block stuff. Night. It's too bad. I really wanted a Chronicler of Ruin the Hearth Guard. That's what I wanted to do. So that's too bad. I guess we'll have to just Chronicler of Ruin, like, Battling Bjerg or something. Yeah, that didn't keep it alive because of the drain. Yeah, because Lunari Priest, that's a play. Nightfall's a play ability. Rad hearth guards. So they who endure is a 16-16 now that we could play. Um, I guess. They just played hush last turn. It's not super likely they have another hush. Oh no, Lee Sin. Lee Sin's super scary. We don't really have much interaction. We have like two Vengeance. Um, keep the Unspeakable Horror. That can pair up with a Vengeance to shut down a Bastion. The Spell Shield. Just kind of curve out. Gotta get out of here. I don't have any spe specific recommendation that uh, for ranked, because that's that's something that's different for everybody. Um, there's so there's not just like one deck that you need to play this deck for for ranked. Um, if you want, uh, Mobilytics has this really cool stats page. If you want to check this out, um, These old eyes still see far that near. has um, a lot of information with different decks and things like that. If there's something that that uh, catches your eye, In Avarosa's name. it's gonna attack with them both. Warren's Prey will, will create a Last Breath Follower that costs three or less. So, therefore, that's something that I can play this turn. Shark Chariot. That one doesn't help. Force is meaningless without skill. A pleasure to see you, Master. So we're gonna go this route as far as drawing a card is concerned with the Avarosan Sentry. We could go like the Babbling Bjerg that also draws a card. So like they both draw cards, but I would rather have the random card in my deck than the unit with five plus power because I'm looking for vengeance. Um, Lee Sin, super scary. And so looking for vengeance. All right, so we got Shark Chariot plus Blighted Caretaker. That's done. Um, yeah, we're gonna attack with these two. So we'll get the shark. 
So like if I'm not attacking with them, they'll still they'll just be able to block the shark. So by attacking with Caretaker, we do five damage to them. Alright, so my plan this turn is to go vault. Conflict is all in the mind. Speak, stars. Speak, I say. I want to unspeakable horror that thing. I, I have to. Gives them all these gems that work so well with Lee Sin. Center your spirit. I can't give them the gems. All right, vengeance. Still looking for you. It's not vengeance. Took the bait. Wait, curse keeper plus caretaker means we don't get the four three. Will no one listen? Poor man's gone mad. We're pulling a lot of cards out of the deck, so that means that we have to be closer to drawing vengeance, right? We are pulling a lot of cards out of the deck. Another shark. We were peaceful once. I drew wig. I should have challenged the mentor and then unspeakable horde my challenger. Yeah, maybe I should have done that. I'm just I wanted to save unspeakable horror to be able to stop a bastion, but I I can't I just can't give them these gems. We fight for one frail yard. Yuck. Cause that means we know the next card is enraged yeti also. So I'm gonna I have to cast like the stalking shadows just to reset the top of the deck. I'll see this through. The dragon spirit awakens! All right, I tried to do the Vault of Helia thing. I guess I really just should not have done Vault of Helia because Vault of Helia killed me this game. Because like, if, if we don't get Hearthguard, if we can just keep our things smaller, I could kill my own... I could go grass the Undying and kill the thing that they're trying to uh, Dragon's Rage and not let them Dragon's Rage. Lee Sin's just ridiculous. That would have been better. Am I keeping Stalking Shadows? I think so. Stalking Shadows help us dig for Warden's Prey. Warden's Prey would be nice to have. Thank you, Vengeance. Thanks for showing up. Not like I could have used you last game or anything. Glad you're here. I'm right, gonna wait because I guess I'll go Trapper plus Unspeakable Horror next turn. Or if they go right to attacks, I could go Stalking Shadows. 
and then Unspeakable Horror. I also don't need to create the Nightfall thing. We could just simply drain one. Yeah, our deck's got a lot of value. We don't have to create the Nightfall. We'll just drain here. Alright, so just gonna play this in attack. Because I, I definitely want to play Avaros and Hearthguard next turn. Um so if I play Babbling Bjerg here, then then you know, then Hearthguard next turn, then we're like waiting forever before we play Enraged Yeti. So just gonna do it like this and just play Stalking Shadows, see if maybe we hit Warren's Prey. But then again, I guess Stalking Shadows would be better to do after. Avaros and Hearthguard. We only, we only waste one mana by waiting. But I don't get to play a Warden's Prey. Right here if we would have found Warden's Prey. 2-2 two, two Warden's Prey isn't important. I probably should have just played Stalking Shadows. I guess we're really doing this. That's pretty good. All right, plan changed. Get a brand new five five. Oh, that doesn't that doesn't work. Is these things? Battlecaster just does that. So that doesn't work. All right, that wasn't necessary. That was a bad chronicler. Curse Keepers. I'm probably not playing these other two Curse Keepers. Which, I guess I should have just played one of these that are not ephemeral. If I'm killing it with Blighted Caretaker. Yeah, I'm expecting a, a rework with Vlad. I think they're going to do that. Here in, in one of the next balance patches. They're kind of discussing... Reworking some champions. That don't see much play. And I think that that starts with Vladimir. Um, the overbuffing of Lee Sin isn't isn't super surprising. Looks like they're gonna play. I know my two one would only trade with a one one with this attack, but if they're playing a lease, I would want my two one to trade with a one one if they're gonna be playing a lease. Sorry, the overbuffing of Lee Sin is is kind of like they did with Braum, right? Like same kind of thing. Like they overbuffed Braum at first and then tuned Braum down just a little bit, and I think that's you know, like they definitely wanted Braum to see play, or sorry, Lee Sin to see play. So this costs five mana. One, two, three, four, five. So I have five other mana. They should not be making that challenge. Still not be making that challenge. So down to six. Gotta be a little worried about Nexus damage, but they only have one card in hand and then drawing another, so we don't have to be that worried. Okay, good. So Thresh is at four. So if we Vengeance Thresh... Oh man, Howling Abyss? I want to play that, but I also want to play Vengeance. With them playing three more Spiders, maybe I need to Vengeance Elise. Alright, I'm going to 
just play a blocker and then play Vengeance on their turn. And I don't attack. Yeah, I, I should have played the Ephemeral one earlier. If one of these was Ephemeral, I would have played it here. But I don't attack because all the, they can block with a 1-1 and have Thresh level up. I don't want that to happen. Alright, so they get leveled up Thresh. Barely alive. Barely alive. Many tribes under one banner. Just trying to survive. You could definitely see this game going either way. Thresh's champion spell. They got two Thresh. Was that their two draw steps? They got another one? Yeah, I'm hoping to deal with other Thresh by then. But at least he does pull new Elise, but the Elise doesn't let them challenge. Curse Keeper was the worst card to, to draw, right? Can't block. don't feel like I really have time for this Howling Abyss. I'm, I'm considering... So we either play Howling Abyss here or we just play two more Curse Keepers and attack with two more Curse Keepers. So that'd be three, four, five. So that'd be five, putting them down to four, making them, you know, block with these things more. So if they don't block Curse Keeper, then they have to block the two Hearth Guards. They could take the first eight of these first four units, block both hearth guards with these things. If only I didn't play the ephemeral one to kill the ephemeral one. And all these curse keepers would give me a 4-3 also. That was a big mistake by me. No. So sad, dying with all the landmarks in hand. This is gonna be tough. Gangplank Sejuani is real aggressive. This is gonna be tough. Yuck. I guess Vengeance is good against both Gangplank and Sejuani. The Tom Kench Sea Monsters, yeah, we're playing Tom Kench with, yeah, three Bayou Brunch with all the Sea Monsters, with, yeah, with Nautilus and, like, the 10-7 one with the Treasures and all that kind of stuff. What does he want from me? So I just played that one drop on Instinct, but that was a bad play. Because I should be playing it to be able to turn on Unspeakable Horror. Now it worked out. Because we got Avaros and Sentry, and Avaros and Sentry is amazing. For turn two, and now we even have another Warden's Prey for turn three to turn on the Nightfall. Safeguard our homes. Stow the Russians! Shackle the prisoners! The chains! Never stop. Could be doing that on my own curse keeper next turn, but nah.
Wish this was a Vault of Helia turn. Wish Vault of Helia and Avaraz and Hearthguard had different mana costs. See the Nebastian border from here. I don't think I even play Curse Keeper. I'm just gonna wait. Holding up this, you know, keeping the two spell mana means we get to play Vengeance, and I feel like that's kind of more important. I've whipped up something special. So I was gonna. So it's basically gonna be like if they play Gangplank, I was gonna play Vengeance. If they don't play Gangplank, I play Vault of Helia. With them doing this, I could go Vault of Helia, but then they could go Make It Rain, and that's a lot of damage. Next turn, if I go Vault of Helia next turn, I have eight mana, so I don't get to go Curse Keeper plus Vengeance on like a Sejuani, but I could go Curse Keeper and Crescent Guardian. Well, I'm gonna play Vault of Helia, because that's that's like what our deck is supposed to be designed to do. Please don't play Mega Rain. Yay. Alright, see we're doing stuff. Look at this. This is cool. We got some cool stuff going on. Man, we've had so many Avarosen sentries. Keep up, keep up. Okay. Overwhelm challenge there. Challenge Brayfin. And challenge Monkey Idol. Let damage happen. So we're gonna kill the monkey idol here so they don't get another powder monkey. Monkey idol real good. Alright, so they're at four out of five, even though they've only dealt four damage. <laughs> Yeah, it must be left to right. Darn, not Babbling Bjerg, but that's alright. That Chronicler will turn into an Avarez and Hearthguard. If they have Sejuani or Gangplank, we have Vengeance. They do not. So we will play Enrage Yeti. And then Hearthguard. Fight or die. These old eyes still see far and clear. You think you're self-defended? Oh wait, I guess I guess now the heart so the hearth guard's gonna turn into the 7-6. Well, 8-7. That's fine. Uh yeah, that's fine. Okay, so basically. Yeah, I guess that's that's okay. I could go on looker and kill my own hearth guard and so that then we get another hearth guard in with you know Chronicler of Ruin into Hearth Guard. I kinda want that. I don't know, I guess. I guess we could also just kind of go for the win of like 8-7 Overwhelm and then cast They Who Endure. And just go for like the Overwhelms. Not the perfect plan against Sejuani. Alright, no Sejuani. Go for the Overwhelms. Look at that. See, Vault of Helia was good that game. That was a good Vault of Helia game. One more game. Ooh, deep. So we'll see if our late game can handle what they got going on with the deep deck. Um, you know, we're pretty slow, and deep deck like deep likes playing against slow decks. Our deck's pretty slow, so we'll see. I'm gonna keep Vault of Helia because the card's cool, and that's why our deck's built around, so we're gonna keep it. But then I don't want two five mana things, so that means we have to mulligan the Avaros and Hearth card. <laughs> he had an opponent today that played Hush instead of Guiding Touch on their own Soraka. Oh man, that'd be sad. That would be sad. 
The chains, they never stop! Eat the trash! I wanna go home! What'd they burn? Dead Bloom Wanderer, Atrocity, Slaughter Docks. That is good for me, because all of those cards are awesome. All right, hopefully find something to do on turn three. If not, we'll play Bjerg on four, Vaults on five. And hopefully no Slaughter Docks over there. Been super impressed with that card. I do not want to see Slaughter Docks, especially how we're, this is just a slow matchup. No, I do not want to see that. Uh, I don't know. I'm considering just playing Blighted Caretaker on this thing. No, I guess we just saved the spell mana for Vengeance. Yeah, it's just the better thing to do. Eyes blazing bright as torches. I will tend this garden. It's because I said it out loud. Makes sense. Not said it out loud. Well, we've got a good hand. Turn one toss, turn two toss, turn three slaughter dogs, turn four Maokai. They've had a good hand. Which one do I want to play? Vaults or Everest Night Guard? Vaults. And then we'll go Unspeakable Horror on the Jaw Hunters to keep our Babbling Bjerg alive. Blessed vengeance. So now Babbling Beard will turn into Everos and Hearthguard. Ooh. Cool. That works great. Now I can go Blighted Caretaker, challenge Maokai, and Hell Cascade. That could be cool. I was planning on going another Hearthguard, but uh, looks like we're changing that plan. No, the they who endure. Ugh, Thorny Toad. You the worst. That's quite bad for me, actually. Today we fight as one. Already played one jettison. They have another jettison. Okay, that's not as bad. Wait, yeah, it is. Now my multi healer won't do anything. The two one dies back here. Never mind. We can do stuff. I turn that into a two drop. Mentor of the Stone. See the Nabastian border from here. Wanna mind them just going Nautilus? Yeah, because now we, we just vengeance the Nautilus. So I'm not blocking not blocking this thing, just taking seven. We want this uh, Vault of Helia chain to keep going. Maybe draw another vengeance. No, not not draw Avaros and Trapper. <laughs> no, we're supposed to put Trapper into play. Ooh, fresh soil. That should have been the opposite way. Draw Trapper, or you know, draw Blighted Caretaker, put Trapper into play. Don't debate. 
All right, I think we go, we're gonna play the 4-4, and now we're gonna Stalking Shadows and go grab Enraged Yeti, right? So like, we just have like that combo. So we're just gonna go grab Enraged Yeti. Caretaker, that's not gonna do a whole lot. So hopefully we can kill them next turn with they who endure. I doesn't look like I'm going to be able to really stop atrocity unless we draw another uh, vengeance. No man's gone mad. I only got the two vengeance. Like, well, I'm just thinking like if they have like Nautilus or something bigger, I guess I would have to grasp the undying. Okay, so Wild Claw. That Wild Claw will put in they who endure. Tread carefully. They they already burned one atrocity with tossing. May, hopefully two, maybe two. Come on, atrocity. Yes. All right. So they they're they gotten rid of two atrocities. They who endure steal this? I don't know exactly how big they who endure is going to be, but I feel like we've had some things die. 16 16? Not going to kill them. At least not yet. I kind of feel like I have to. I, know, I guess I can't, I can't just go to attacks because that doesn't kill them. I think Mentor of the Stones does more than Alpha Wild Claw, doesn't it? Yes. Gems are superb. Bad for the teeth, though. So my plan, my plan is Mentor, Chronicler of Ruin, the Mentor. I was gonna do that. Get three gems, and then be able to pump it up and have the gems. That was part of my plan. Didn't exactly work out. Either go the eight-seven body or a three-two and a four-four. I expected them to play another thing, like that's why I didn't expect like going wide to really work, but they didn't play anything. Surprisingly enough. Maybe I should have gone the 2-2 and the 4-4. The 3-2 and the 4-2. Yeah. Whatever. <clears throat> they have to be just like only champions left, right? So we have to be really fortunate. And draw a spell. We got Withering Whale. Unspeakable Horror. It's not gonna do it. Close game. Good game. The Elusive has got us. GG's. So yeah, I don't have Atrocity in here. Just to, couldn't really fit Atrocity with the other stuff. You know, maybe Atrocity would maybe be better than the Howling Abyss. We didn't ever play the Howling Abyss that whole time. Uh, it's hard to make a deck with multiple landmarks. And, you know, Howling... Yeah, I just never really used Howling Abyss. But that, that could be another option there is playing, you know, playing Atrocity over this for They Who Endure. But I liked our deck. I thought it was pretty cool. We got to really outgrind other decks. Like, we, we grinded real hard. Uh, maybe maybe we just don't need Stalking Shadows with how much how much value our, our decks are already getting. That could, you know, maybe Stalking Shadows could be, like, 
these three stalking shadows could be more um, interaction. Maybe that's that could just be a third unspeakable horror and a, and a couple atrocities. That could be uh, that could be a thing also. But yeah, really cool little little uh, championless value deck here with the championless landmarks. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. You got any ideas with a deck or um, other decks you want to see on Meme Tier Monday, anything like that, feel free to uh, uh, you know leave those comments. I always appreciate those. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.